Hello everybody, I am Alice Castellino, Physics Faculty of Vidyashram College, Mysore. So I will be dealing with gravitation, the first PUC chapter 8. So I want to tell you some of the incidents that usually happen in our day to day life. So let us go to the first slide. So you can see here there are three images. The first image tells you there is a rainfall and the second image tells you there is a boy who is playing with a ball. Gradually the ball falls down onto the surface of the earth, right? So the third image tells you there is a waterfall. So while describing all these three images, I used one particular word that is called as fall. So I have a question for you. Why is all the objects falling down? It is because of a natural phenomenon called as gravity. So this natural phenomenon was given by Sir Isaac Newton. So he is Sir Isaac Newton. When he was sitting under an apple tree, he sees that there is an apple falling down. So this is how he got to know about the natural phenomenon of gravity. Now going to the next slide, let us know what do we mean by the definition of gravity. It says that it is the force of attraction between a body and the earth. So one thing you have to remember, it is the force of attraction. And between what? Between a body and the earth. You can see here, they have particularized it to be the earth and the body. There is a hidden content in this. So you can see this image. There is a ball which is falling towards the earth. So here the ball exerts a force on the earth and the earth exerts a force on the ball. So I can say this force would be F1 of the ball and the earth would be F2. So I want to say that these two forces are equal to one another. So I repeat, these forces are equal to one another. So when these forces are equal to one another, why do you think that the ball is going towards the earth and why the earth is not going towards the ball? It is because of, it is justified by Newton's second law of motion, which is given by the formula F is equal to M into A. What do you mean by F? It is the force. M is the mass, A is the acceleration due to gravity. I will rearrange this equation and I write it A is equals to F divided by this M comes to the denominator. So I can write it as M here. If you have noticed, A is inversely proportional to mass. A is inversely proportional to mass. What do you mean by inversely proportional? It means if one quantity increases, another quantity decreases. If this quantity decreases, this quantity increases. See, coming to the picture, I can tell you this explanation. So you can see the earth, it has got more mass compared to that of the ball and its acceleration is less. More the mass, less the acceleration, it is inversely proportional. So coming to the ball, you can see that the mass of the ball is less compared to that of the earth and therefore its acceleration is more. So you can understand by this it is inversely proportional. Hope you understood what do you mean by gravity. And gravity is denoted by small letter g. So that is called as acceleration due to gravity. Now, going to the next slide, I have a question for you. 
Have you ever thought that? Is there a force of attraction like gravity in the space? I repeat, is there a force of attraction like gravity in the space? So many of the answers would be, no ma'am, there is no gravity. There is no force of attraction in the space because not even a single object is falling down like you see in the earth. But I say, the professor says, the scientist says that there is a force of attraction in the space which is called as gravitation. So this is the gravitation. And you can see the definition of gravitation here. It is the force of attraction between the two bodies. So in the previous slide, you saw that in the definition of gravity, it was the force of attraction between a body and the Earth. But whereas, if you see here, it is the force of attraction between two bodies. So in the first picture, you can see that there is an Earth where the moon is revolving around the Earth. Got my point? So first half of the definition you understood. So what is the second half of the definition here? By virtue of their masses means what? Any object in this universe has mass. Obviously, it has got force of attraction. So now, coming to the first image of the slide, you can see that there is an Earth where the moon is revolving around the Earth, right? Now, why is it revolving around the Earth? It is because of the gravitational force. So you can arise a question that, why is the moon not falling into the surface of the Earth? As the ball fell into the surface of the Earth, why is the moon not falling into the surface of the Earth? It is because of another force called as the centripetal force. What is it? It is a centripetal force. It is another centripetal force where this force acts simultaneously along with the gravitational force. Hope you got my point. So in the second image, you can see there are many planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Earth. They are re revolving around the sun. Why is it because of? It is because of the same concept of the first image, what I told you. It is because of the gravitational force along with the centripetal force. I hope you got my point. Next, going to another slide. There are many gaseous matters. What do you mean by matter? Something which occupies space is called as matter. So what is the gaseous matter? Something which occupies space. Got my point? There are many gaseous matters in the universe. And these gaseous matters combine together, forming little, little stars. For me, it is little. So you can see there are many stars in the first image. And these stars combine together, forming a big galaxy. This is because of what? It is because of the gravitational force. Now, the gravitational force is very much responsible for the formation of the large-scale structures of the universe. So you can see this is the picture of n number of stars. And here you can see there is a big galaxy. So in which is the galaxy we are staying in? It is the Milky Way galaxy. Our galaxy consists of solar system, planets, sun, moon, etc. Hope you got my point. So next going to another content that is universal law of gravitation. So this law says that according to the law, the force of attraction is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So as soon as you read this, you will not get to know what is the meaning of the law. So we will keep on deriving the formula for the force of attraction. So by that, you can understand what you mean by the law. Next, going to the next slide. So you can see that there are 
two particles. I consider it to be A and this to be B. And it, its mass is M1 and M2 respectively. And it exerts an equal force on each other. I can write it as F1 and F2. So you have to remember that F1 is equal to F2. The forces they exert is equal to one another. So now you understood what do you mean by force, equal forces. So they exert an equal force maybe at the center. So now I have taken the distance of the two particles to be R square. Why I have taken it to be as R square? So mass M1 exert a force of F1 equal to that of M2, right? So until where it exerts a force, I consider it to be as R. And this distance, I consider it to be R. So these two together, I write it as R square respectively. Got my point? So the first part of the law says that it wants to give you the force of attraction, the value of the force of attraction, but whereas in the second part of the law says that it is directly proportional to the product of their masses. So what do you mean by directly proportional? F is directly proportional to the product of their masses. Right? Now, what do you mean by directly proportional? If one quantity increases, another quantity also increases. If one quantity decreases, another quantity also decreases simultaneously. Hope you understood. I will give you one example for this. I consider a stone or a ball a hard object. I drop it from the fifth floor of the building. So what it is happening? It falls so fast. You can see that the force of attraction is so more, right? In the same way, I replace the stone with a feather. So what is happening here? It comes so slow. I leave it, I leave the feather from the fifth floor. And it comes so slow, right? Now, you can understand that in case of a stone, the mass is more, the force is also more. I told you, right? In the case of the feather, the mass is less, the force of attraction is also less. So by this, you can see that it is directly proportional. So I consider this to be equation one. So now, going to the next slide, the third part of the law says that it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. What do you mean by inversely proportional? I already told you in the previous slide that whenever one object, whenever one object increases, another object decreases, ulta, I can say. Got my point? So I will give you one example. I take a rocket, I take a rocket, and there is an Earth's surface. As the distance between the rocket and the Earth goes on increasing, its force of attraction goes on decreasing. At certain point of time, at certain point of velocity, as the rocket goes into the space, the force of attraction finally becomes zero, right? So the force finally becomes zero. So it means that the force decreases as the distance of a rocket increases. So I have another example for you. I take two magnets, North Pole and the South Pole. You can see that the magnets are together with a small distance. So as soon the distance is less, it comes attached itself, right? As these magnets are far and far and far, you can see that the force of attraction keeps on reducing. Got my point, what do you mean by inversely proportional? So now, combining equation one and two, we have F is proportional. This is the proportionality sign. It is proportional to product of their mass. 
and uh, inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. Now, I remove this proportionality constant and introduce a equality sign. And along this equality sign, I introduce a gravitational constant. So this is called as the gravitational constant which you are including with along with the equality sign. So now you got the formula for the force of attraction between what? Between two bodies, two objects. So by this you can say that it is a universal constant. So I would like to conclude that gravitation is universal. It attracts each and every object on this universe. Even me, you, even every planet in this universe. Thank you.